previous video we had a look at the email validator and we created some code similar to this on the screen. So we've got the user inputs their email, it checks if it contains an at symbol, if it doesn't then it comes up saying your email address must contain an at symbol. So it goes through and tells them what the error is with their code. So if we run that and we put in an email address, it should come up saying what is valid and what isn't valid. So we know that these things are valid. Now, it can be useful to create this kind of system, but we want it to work so that we can use an email file. So I've got a file here that contains four email addresses. Now, rather than inputting each of them manually, we're gonna have a look at how we can get our system to take and check each of these email addresses one after the other. So what we're going to do is we're going to have email equals basically email is going to equal a file as it were but to do this we're going to have to go through and change a couple of these uh, little details in here because what we want to happen is it's going to check for an at symbol first if it finds an at symbol then we want it to move on to the next part here. And if it doesn't move on, then it's going to have an else. Okay, so if it does contain an at symbol, then we want it to check, does it contain spaces? So if I copy this to here, so it goes under here, so what happens is, the code will read down, I'll put a gap in there just to make it easier to read. So if it does contain an at symbol, it will go down and then it will go to this if statement here. And then we want an else to be within this one as well. So else, and then this is where we've got our else here. So this one here, what I'll do is I'll cut that one and just put that in there. And then I can get rid of that else there. And what we're kind of doing is creating this staggered effect so that it staggers down and checks each level of the code. And then here, if it contains that, then we can say that the ending is valid. Okay, like so. Just move that across. Move that back up there. To there. Okay, so it prints that the ending is valid. Okay, so I can get rid of that one. And then we've got else here. And again, we can just cut that bit there. And then just make sure that they are in line. So what will happen is it will stagger it down basically. So we create this staggered effect of checking what's going on and what's happening. So you've got, make sure that they're there. You've got this bit, which if there is an at in the email, then it will print valid and move down to this bit. And then if it contains no spaces, it moves down here and then it will go through. So let's check that and see if this works. And then just indent there. At let's say .co.uk but I'm going to put a space here so what happens is it goes valid and then it stops and says email contains an empty space so it says this is invalid so it gets to here and then stops because there's a space so obviously this bit wouldn't be valid either so we don't it doesn't really matter because it stopped saying that there are no spaces okay so if we had a different response where for example, we had, let's say, at school, for example. This bit's valid. Email contains no spaces, but the email ending is not valid. Okay, so then our program stops there. Now, another thing that we're going to want is, as we go through, we're going to want to use some of the coding so that it will add those correct and valid emails to one list and invalid emails go into another list so that the user can easily see out of that list what emails are incorrect. 
So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to use a file now. So we're going to open the file using some coding. Right, so let's start adding in some of our coding here. Okay, so what we're going to want it to do is to read information from a file. So to get it to read from a file, I'm going to do file equals and then open. And I've got my brackets. I'm going to get it to open the text file called email. And I'm going to open it as a read only because I don't want it to write to it. It's just going to open that file. And then what we need to do is we need to do something called for in. And this is for line in e in the file basically. So what we want it to do is for every line in this file we want it to run this code. So it's going to loop this code for us. So to get this to work what we want to do is just select all of this including this input here and just tab across one because then that is all part of this loop. What we also want to do is to set it's that the email is equal to the line. So I've given that line a variable. So we're going to do line, like so. So it equals line from the file. And I'm also going to do dot strip. Now the reason you do that is because otherwise you're going to end up with the slash ends at the end because it adds a new line each time. So what we want this to do is for each a email in that file to run through it basically. So it'll just run through. So you can see here that when I run that code it's gone through, it's checked, blah blah blah, and it's checked all those things. But it's not really helpful because it's not giving us the right information. What we really want it to do is we want it to add the valid emails to one list and invalid emails to another list. So if we add a list at the top and call it valid emails for example and then just do my square brackets and then invalid emails or email and square bracket. Now part of this is that if it reaches the end here and it says ending is valid, we want it to append the list. So we're going to do valid email and we're going to dot append it with the value of email. So if it is valid, it adds email to the list. Now at every other point where the code will stop because it's invalid, then what we can do here is we can do invalid instead. So this is now invalid email dot append with the value email. So if it's wrong, it's going to add email to the list. And because the coding stops, it means that you can add this here as well. So that's Enter that one down and we're going to add it here. So the ending is not valid, so add it to the list. Okay, so invalid and contains no spaces, etc. And then if we said here your email must contain the at symbol, we can add it there. So if we go all the way through, it means that it should add it to the list. So let's have a look and see how that works. Okay, so they're adding, but we're not actually getting the information out. So at the end here, we want it to print the list basically. So print valid email and print invalid email. So at the end there, it comes up and it says uh, which ones are valid and which ones are invalid. So it's quite a useful way to see what information is valid. So if I put here, these emails are valid. 
like so. And then as per emails contain some errors. Okay, so like that. So now you can see that it comes up saying these emails are valid. So the user knows that from that document they go, oh brilliant, these three are correct. This one I need to look at again. Okay. Now to make this code even easier, you can have it so that it only actually prints something if there is an error. If there is no error, it doesn't print anything. Okay, so if we say uh, email contains no spaces, that one's fine. Ending is valid. So we only want to get rid of things that are correct, really. Because you don't, if everything's fine, you don't need to tell them that because they will know it's fine because it will say at the end. If there's an error though, then that's when we want it to come up. So we don't need to know that the ending is valid because that's just part of our testing. So if we do this now, we could even have it so that at any stages where the ending is not valid, you could get it to print that email address. But let's have a look and see how this looks. So your email address must contain an at symbol. And then we've got these emails are valid. So this is valid. This one is not valid because it doesn't contain an at symbol. Now if we went into our email here and I added the at symbol. So let's say I did it John at Smith, for example. Save that. And then let's try running this again. So now it just comes up saying that this contains some uh, errors and email contains an empty space so this is invalid okay so these are valid and this one oh, contains an error okay now I can show you my example one that I've created which looks like this and the idea of this coding is that it works its way through and I've got it so that if the email does not contain the at symbol, it comes up with this message. So if we run this, you can see that mine writes uh, here, it appears that you didn't select a valid ending to your email, for example, .co.uk, because they've got a gap here. So you may wish to check these emails. So you can see that it works in the same way where you've got the valid responses and the invalid responses and then just looking at this dot strip it's important that we include that because if we don't include the dot strip you get errors coming up and if you just had it without that you end up with slash new lines etc at the end so it's important that you do keep that dot strip okay because that strips away any of the unnecessary information and just leaves you with the essential bits. Now I'm hoping that tutorial was helpful and it's taught you how to use a document to be able to check and validate emails to validate lots of emails at the same time. It would be incredibly useful if you had thousands of emails that you needed to check and it provides you just with a very simple list of any of the emails that are incorrect that need to be looked at again.